the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Thank you, love. <laughs> Is your fellow man, and and I, and I and I really I agree with you saying is it, it's not a a love ministry, and and I think that's what you're trying to point out. It's not a just a faith ministry. It's 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 it's, it's not about deliverance ministry. It's it's the whole package of the fruits of the spirit with the foundation itself being love. That's I think that's the whole point. Like you're saying, you don't want to single it out. But you definitely want to understand that that is the foundation of when, motiv when, when, or motivation. When, when I think it, you know, I think excuse me, but when I think in terms of love and God, I think the terms are synonymous. Yeah. I think they're interchangeable, and that, and that's how I view. I mean, that's how I, that's how I receive it. Um, in the beginning was love. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, love created. He said, love, but God so loved the world, he so God the world. I mean, if you put these things, if you, if you, if you, you know, I, think the, I think the problem becomes sometimes that when we think in terms of the term of love, you think it's some kind of a modeling, um, you know, feministic, you know, but David loved his son, Absalom. Uh, Saul's son, love David. Yeah. So it's not a feminine kind of a response. Love, those he loves, he chastens. So it's not that kind of a love where, where it's all oh, nice and kissy, touchy feely kind of thing, even though it's inclusive in that. But it's also a thing, it's a, it's a relationship and a situation where a person is brought into correction. And that for their eternal salvation. You know, so there's, there's nothing soft about it. I mean, there's something there may be some soft aspects, some nurturing aspects, and there's some corrective aspects as well. But, so when we look at the term love we, and God, we have to look at it from the totality. God showed great wrath in the Old Testament and, and, and says he's going to show great wrath in the future. In the future. That's still the love of God. That's still right. God who is love going to be doing that. Well, he rescues us through the cross, but how do we, you see what I'm saying? Let love interrupt you for a minute because I got to go. And let love ask you what we found out about Romans chapter 7. Let's see. <laughs> let love ask you what you found out for the first four verses of Romans chapter 7. Yeah. The, you know, we put it, it, it is interesting. Uh, I was looking at that too. Because I think that the challenge, the way he's beating everything for the deliverance of Christ, uh, Romans chapter 7, let me put it back up here. Uh, you got seven yeah, I got mine. Let me see here. You know, when I did that, let me get this out of the way. One second. When I did that, I, I, my CIT was. Uh, Let's see what the. No, one second. I didn't, put, I didn't put that, and I think that part was missing in it. Uh, I think I, I put that in a, a bishop. The, I, put, I did three or four versions of that uh, CIT for my. Uh, where we're saying is that the kingdom of kingdom of God's people delivered by Christ from the laws of sin and death born against our minds. Law has no, then the second one was law has no dominion over kingdom believers. Sin dwells in the flesh, wars against our minds, but Christ delivers. In the kingdom, the law brings knowledge of sin that wars against our mind, but Christ delivers us. And I think, you know, I think you said last week that we probably want to just tackle the first four verses. That This one is covering the whole chapter of it, of the uh, chapter seven. But I was looking, so these CITs are based on the whole chapter seven. Kingdom people released from laws of sin and death, the wars against our mind, but deliverance from Christ. And, I, and I, when I was thinking about that, and it goes back to love itself, uh, if, if if you know, Elder, if, if the love is motivating by deliverance, the, it's to, to defeat the sin that dwells in my flesh. Because the problem about sin is the selfishness, where 
Love is not selfish. Uh oh. Okay, so, so, what is he talking about in this verse? In these verses? What, 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 what is the, what is the central theme of the verse? The central theme is, to me, is like the central theme is that the, in the sin, deliverance from sin, and the struggle of sin, and the deliverance is through Christ Jesus. Because there's a war going on in our flesh. Okay, so why do we need to be delivered from sin? Because sin, ace, the way to sin is death. Uh, the other piece is that because sin does not have dominion over us in Christ. Why? Why, why, why can't sin have dominion over us in Christ? Because it is destructive, right? Sin is death. Sin basically equals death. But we in Christ, though. <laughs> We in the flesh too, right? We have to be spiritual, my right. We have to be to to be delivered from the the uh, right. I like that. That's a good point. To be delivered is See, to be in the spirit. With. This is the issue we're dealing with right now, and why people don't walk away from the church. Uh huh. Because what they will tell you is is that we in Christ. Yeah. See, all these people claim and have a testimony that they are in Christ and that the spirit of God is in them. Right. Come on, talk to and yet we see the dominion of sin. Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> so right. what's wrong with that? And, and, they, yeah. they ain't nothing wrong with that. Gee. Yeah. They ain't saying. Well, well, listen, ain't nobody perfect. Right. That Christ was the only one that was perfect. Right. That's what yeah. So we have so we see we have we're we're living in a reality now where people have justified. The, the exact opposite of scripture. Mm. Exactly. And saying it shall not have dominion over you. Right. You sit there and say that you are born again, spirit filled, in the body of Christ believer. Right. And just living just the raggedy and wretched that you did before you got saved. Yes, which is right, right. So now my question to you, that's why I'm asking the important question. Because in this in the text that we're dealing with. The real issue is being confronted. It is. The issue is that, hey, hey, look now, look. Either, either you still, you you still in a situation where sin has dominion over you, right, right, or you've been delivered, right. Now you can't have it both ways. Exactly. You can't be spiritual minded and carnal minded. And, and, and I guess sometimes we straddle the fence on both of them. Now, in these first verses, what, what, what Paul is trying to show you is that the solution that God has provided is fail-proof. Married to another. It's, it's, it can't fail. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It, it, right. Listen, he said, if you understand it, it can't fail. He leaves this group of verses, and then he goes on to walk you through what the real problem is, the difficulties in dealing with that problem, right? Trying to escape the problem, right? Using methods that God never intended, right? And then he shows you, but the way that God provision is fail proof. It's fail proof. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, marry if you, you know, I want to say, if you marry to another, then you're no longer under the bondage of the, the other old man. The sin, right? So, so the CRT has to do with. Let me see. Wow. What? Uh, it's going to be difficult to get at the, uh, the uh, the core of those verses. Okay. Um, 
If you could choose one word to describe what these, what the, what the theme of these verses is, what would it be? The uh, married to another. I, you know, I, I think I like the the first part being married to another, <laughs> and, and which get, which means I no longer have to have dominion. The other one doesn't have dominion over me because I'm married to another. Okay, what 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 what, what else, dog? I'm curious to see what he got. I lost. I, I lost him. Uh, he dropped out. <laughs> and, uh, <see. laughs> hey. I can't, I'll record it, so we'll put it, I'll, I'll put it back out there. I'll put it back out today. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I'm on the impression that we really don't want to do CRT, so I, I think we probably all let it go. Tom. I understand that this is this is different, and I I understand that it is very demanding. But if you know, but if people don't want to participate, then you know. I no, there, there's, there's, the elder, there's the elder right there. He's I got, the, I'm right. trying to find my, and, and kick myself out. <laughs> hey, what's that? What's your CIT uh, elder for the summit? Central idea of the tech. You, want, you want to pull up? Yeah, if you want to. Let me see here. Let me see. Give me one second. Can you, where I got to get to that share screen, don't I? Yeah, yeah, that green button. Oh, crap. Where is that at? Well, let me ask you guys a question. Did you discover that the break, the place where you broke the script is the wrong place to break it? Say where now? The place where we broke the script is, is considered to be one piece. <laughs> After I got into it, I realized that's the wrong place to break it. Yeah, you, well, could, could, you cannot break off at first fold. Right, right. Mm. right. That's why I did the whole thing. You yeah. have to, but but you, but there is a place where you can't break it. Mm. Uh. Is it at the mm. end? Mm. Did I hit the chair button? Yeah, I see it. You don't see it? We see it. Okay. The system or reality, the world, the subject, no longer applies to those who are in Christ. Okay. So, so where is this uh, What is this system or reality of the world? What what verse you brought it from? When we start at, at the top, when we start talking about, I, I, I hope I got the right scripture. I was in you know, Romans seven, right? Right, right. Romans seven. One four. We, we were talking about. Can you put that up? I need to stop sharing, right? In order to put that up. Yeah. The the system that, that when I the, the system that I was looking at was the system when you brought forth marriage and you talked about the the, the, the first if I'm getting this right right oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 dealing with dominion yeah so she has a husband right and so, she she actually is under the dominion of that husband as long as he's alive but when that husband is dead to her then she does not fall under that dominion anymore right she, she falls under the, uh, she's free to be, be, be wed to another person or another domain. She changes system stuff. I kind of, I have a tendency to look at this stuff and it's a system and, and it has rules and regulations that it follows. Right. And the systems of this world, I think he equates to this reality, reality is being married to that first husband that's mentioned in here. Right. This, she's married to the world system. She's carnal. She's subject to the things of the flesh, the, the inputs of the flesh and the whole nine yards. But when that relationship is dead, when, when that guy dies, or she's cut off from him, or this system is that she's dead to the system. If she's dead to the world, then she's free to be alive to another husband. And that husband in this case is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And everything that comes with being yoked in the kingdom of God. 
Uh, that and I think that uh, not only uh, that applies to everything. Even from a, we look at the places where Jesus exercised authority, uh, spirit realm, cardinal realm. He said, "All power has been given him in heaven and earth." So there's no dynamic that we're going to experience in this reality that he is not Lord of. He is, he is the final word in what is up and what is down. It, it, it just kind of simplifies. So the physics of this world is under the control of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he demonstrated that by walking on water. So his, the system that we are literally a part of is so, is so far above the one that we were initially in. And I think that's what he's saying here. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you, let me ask you, the first question I'm going to ask you is, is in the first verse, he died upon the screen. I want to know what you think he means when he said, for you know you not, brother, for I speak to them that know the law. What law is he talking about? The law that I think he's talking about here is going to be the law of Moses. Okay. Okay, so now if he's talking about the law of Moses, is that a worldly system? Yes, it was a worldly system. No, it was not, a worldly system. That that the law of okay, Moses? I, I mean, I'm sorry, you good. The law he of said, Moses? He said, he said, he said, yeah, he said the law was good. The mm -hmm. law was righteous. And that law came from God. He said the law is spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, in that regard, yeah, I agree, 100. Uh, it is spiritual as far as man can get. Cardinal. I mean, those are rules and regulations that were set in place to to uh, affect men's behavior, not their hearts. Right. So well, we think. Uh, all I'm saying is, if if he's talking about the Mosaic law and the system that the Mosaic law establishes is a system that is ordained by God. Right. I think he's talking about the law of sin and death, which is highlighted in Romans 8. That's legit. No, no, he, he's not talking about law of sin and death. Well, that is, when you look at it. It's the Mosaic law that tells you about marriage. It, it, it's the Mosaic law. In this one, he's talking about marriage in reference to how a person being yoked to, this woman being yoked to her husband, affects her. Okay, but what stipulates that? What says that a woman? What says that? A, what is it that tells us that a woman can't get married to another man while her husband lives? Uh, the law of Moses. The Mosaic law. <laughs> and that's in Leviticus, though, right? Talking, yeah. 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 It's, it's the Mosaic law that tells you that. Right. So all, the, all I'm saying to you is that it seems to me that Paul is appealing to the knowledgeable person mm -hmm. who knows the Mosaic law. Right. right. Know what the Mosaic law says, particularly about the instance of marriage. Yes. Right. He could have talked about tithes, right. he could have talked about uh, offering, but he chose marriage. Right. Yes, but, an aspect about the dominion that he has. Right. And, and, and I think that that's, that's, that's when you said it, it's, it affects our carnal behavior, right? Because Moses' law didn't go, wasn't a, it wasn't a spiritual law. It wasn't, it, wasn't to the, it wasn't to affect their hearts. It actually affected their behavior. And it was obvious that it affected their hearts because they couldn't keep it. If, they could have, if, they, if, if it affected their hearts, they would have been walking. They weren't. So that's not, that's not it wasn't like it wasn't righteous. We have laws on the books now that are righteous laws, but men's hearts prevent them from keeping it because they're unrighteous in themselves. So that's, in this right that's here, the law's fault, though. Is you, you can't put the thing at the law. The law's not the problem. No, 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 in the sense that it can make people righteous, it's not a problem. But it's just kind of like a dynamic. You, we can know all the righteousness cognitively that it is to know, but if we cannot keep it, it means our heart has not been changed. And without the heart being changed, we can't keep the law. That's that's why they, that is the issue. Uh, so we had to have something come in. The Lord Jesus Christ had to come in and fix the problem, which was our heart. He had to give us life in order for us to manifest and even exceed what was written down on his home. So in this, when he, the analogy that he's giving here is that a person is subject to a certain, in the case of a husband, is subject to that husband and all that is pertaining to that marriage until that man dies. Yeah. And when that man 
died, is that person is free from all of that stuff that comes with marriage. And it's free to now marry somebody else. Exactly. And you know what? You know, I'm interrupted, uh, this elder. One of the things that's interesting, if you take the, this you take one through six, and we use it, he used an analogy of the Mosaic Law about marriage. And the fact is, if, if, if when the husband is dead, she is free to marry again. But like you said, maybe it's more to it's more than one through six because when you get to nine, what we found out about nine. Look at nine, Elder. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, <laughs> sin revived and I died. Now that that that, that, that makes perfect good sense. It would. In other words, the husband is alive. But I mean, well, 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 well in, in, well, in, 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 in this sense, huh? without the law. In the text, the husband never died anyway. It's a wife that died. Is it what? Never died. I thought it was it. It was the husband that died. Husband. Six though. And three. If you look at three, but if her husband be dead, it's if, a seven it three. Says, is where the husband died. It says if. Mm-hmm. If the husband right, right. So this is a. This I, see a I see your point. I see your point. Situation. Uh huh. When you go point. to the text, it said that the. But the other thing you're saying here, it never said wife either. It kept saying she though, right? You said a woman. Woman, right? Same thing. It's, no, well, is a woman a wife? Not that's no, a woman can be case. a wife, she gotta be a woman. Oh, hello, see, that's why you gotta be careful. Okay. Just because you get married, that doesn't make you a wife. If you get married, it makes you a wife, right? Okay, so I think if, a, so if you were married to a woman, like Hosea did. <laughs> is she is she still alive? <laughs> I, I, I think I think in, in, even in, in Hosea, I think he re- she's referenced as a wife when he's told her to go get her. Right. I think he he, got, he, he when he, when he's told to get married this woman, she is referenced as his wife. Is she, did she behave as a wife? Do we? And that's what I, I think. I think the text chooses to call this a woman because it wants us to understand something. He never calls her wife. He always says the woman which has a husband. It never anywhere does it say why. But in the Revelation, the church is constantly referred to as the bride of Christ. Okay, gotcha. So I, so I just took notice, why does he never say why? But what, what what does nine trying to say though? We still are saying like married to the law. Yeah, they're still married. But I think what he's trying to show you is is that there is an attitude that comes with being a woman, being female, and being single that is different from a wife. Yes, sir. Right. Now, once you become a wife, you shouldn't need to any longer be referred to as a woman. Okay, gotcha. That's why they call it, listen, in, in John chapter 4, Jesus called it, listen, it's a woman at the well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> she ain't, she, 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 ain't she, in a, she in a relationship, but she ain't a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I like that. That's good. I like that. But, you know, in 72, when he called her a woman, she still has the, she has the constraints on her, even if, as though she were a wife, even though she may not be behaving as one. Right. It doesn't change it when it says, but if the husband be dead, yes. she is loose from the law of her husband. But it says, well, as long as the woman is bound to her, Probably. whether she be a wife then or not, she's subject to the law of her husband. Yeah. And so that- whether they be faithful or unfaithful, and it's just like us in the church, whether we be faithful to Christ or not, we're still bound by that law yes. uh, or their relationship. I can't say law, but by that relationship. Well, listen, yeah. listen. You probably have an interesting point because according to the text now, if you're unfaithful, you're calling adultery. Yeah. Legit. Right. Legit. Right. So and he that can take unfaithfulness lightly. Yeah. No. And yeah. now if you're calling adultery, this the sentence for adultery is death. Yes. And that's why he's trying to point out. Once this law locks in this dominion over you. You ain't free to behave any kind of way. That's legit. Right. right. Because the consequences of behavior contrary to the law is death in this case. 
Yeah. Well, see, the thing, but the thing that was really interesting about this too is the fact that being married to that that endemic nature is death anyway. Yeah. So a woman who is truly yoked to this system, that I, I call this system, well, pro, we, when we were yoked to this system, we were dead in trespasses and sin, according to the scripture. The scripture said we were born dead in trespasses and sin. So we were literally born in a system that was dead and decaying and decaying and killing us at the same time. And we were subject to that system. All things that applied to the endemic nature or the fallen nature applied to us at that point. And what I was seeing was that once we become dead to that, that system or that nature, now we are alive in Christ. And the only thing that really applies to us now, except we go back under that bondage, is the laws of, of, of spirit and life. Okay, let me so, see. which is a totally different system. Let me tell you something that's really, that's really interesting. Now, Jesus was born into that same system. Mm -hmm. When I say system now, I'm talking about the Mosaic law. Yes, sir. He, it said he was born of the woman made under the law. This is the system, this is the system that Paul is trying to point out. He's talking to the people particularly talking to Jewish people who've got knowledge of the Mosaic system. Right. So Jesus is born under the Mosaic system of law, and he got no problem. He didn't apply to him. <laughs> well, but, did, 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 but you know, that analogy of the fact is that even Christ, for us, died on the cross. And it's interesting, nine, for I was alive without the law, but when the commandment came, sin Revived that dead, you know, that husband I'm married to, it came alive, but he died though. Well, well, so, so the question is, <laughs> well, 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 well. who can I interrupt? Just one second. Wait, this husband to be in, in, <laughs> in, in the city. And you take a look at this when, when Jesus came to the earth, the reason Jesus didn't fall into that system was because Jesus was not born man, he was not of the Edemic seed. He was actually the seed of God. Right. That's what made him a worthy sacrifice. Which when he came in, though? Jesus literally, in accordance with the biblical script, in accordance with biblical principles, Jesus couldn't die because he never sinned. Mm -hmm. okay, but he, 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 he did not even have a sin nature. I would so, But we're not talking about the sin nature. We're talking well, about the system. Yeah, just in the scripture, the demic, the demic system was in, not the demic, but the mosaic law was in place when at his, his advent. But it didn't apply to him because he was not of that different nature or that line. He wasn't of that blood. I mean, it applied to him in his practices, but as far as his person was concerned, he was so far above that it was ridiculous. He, he kept the law. He obeyed. He definitely the law. did. He exceeded the law. Okay, but he, he, he established. He, didn't he didn't in himself. It. He didn't. In himself, it. he had established the law, and that's he where he got into trouble with that because. The law said that you could not do such and such on the Sabbath day. And Jesus did anyway. And he said, oh, hold on, hold on. But that was a misinterpretation of the law. Mm. Was it? <laughs> yes. You, are, you to me, are you trying to tell me you think Jesus violated the law? Did he violate it? He, yeah. Jesus Christ literally, yes as no. he said, he you fulfilled think he violated the law. The law. No, no, but he died. Does, uh, uh, let me ask you this question: Does a when a when a uh, a, 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 a ambulance goes through a stop sign, does it violate the law? Yes. It really? So when it, when that when that light is flashing and that, and that ambulance goes past that stop sign without stopping, that's a violation of the law. That's a violation of the law. The stop sign says stop. <laughs> it don't change when you drive the ambulance. But does it? Is there? Is, there, is, is it held accountable to that law? You see what I'm saying? That law is in place for a reason. But when you got an emergency situation, then you can violate that law okay. and still be with it without a repercussion, without any repercussion. Okay. So Jesus Christ exceeded, just like that ambulance, exceeded the law and the prophets in every way. No, what Jesus did was brought light to the real meaning of what the law meant, which the scribes and Pharisees had jacked up. They had it wrong from the very beginning. The, the verbiage didn't change. 
in the Coil with Moses.